you had better wake up and understand that there are people who are guiding your life and you don't even know it. last thing the men behind the curtain want is a conscious, informed public capable of critical thinking, which is why a continually fraudulent zeitgeist is output via the mass media and the educational system. They seek to keep you in a distracted, naive bubble, and they are doing a damn good job of it. In 2005, an arrangement between Canada, Mexico, and the United States was made. This arrangement, unannounced to the public, unregulated by Congress, merges the United States, Mexico, and Canada into one entity, erasing all borders. It's called the North American Union, and you might want to ask yourself why you've never heard of this. In fact, there is only one mainstream reporter who has actually heard of and has had the courage to cover this issue. The Bush administration's open borders policy and its uh decision to ignore the enforcement of this country's immigration laws is part of a broader agenda. President Bush signed a formal agreement that will end the United States as we know it, and he took the step without approval from either the U.S. Congress or the people of the United States. It's a deal that few have even heard of. It's being done again by very few people at the very top on behalf of the investment class, but the working class of people. Uh, political officials across our country from communities, uh, from cities and so forth, they don't know anything about this. This isn't some trade agreement. It is a total removal of sovereignty from these countries, which will also result in a completely new currency called the Amero. Um, apart from that, I think one thing people who are dollar-based need to focus on is the Amero. That's the one thing that nobody's talking about that I think is going to have a big impact on, uh, on everybody's life in Canada, the U.S., and uh, Mexico. The Amero is the proposed new currency for the North American community, which is being uh, developed right now between Canada, the U.S., and Mexico to make a borderless community much like the EU, and uh, the dollar, Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar, and the Mexican peso replaced by the Amero. By default of this agreement, the American Constitution will eventually be obsolete. You would think that a situation like this would be on the cover of every major newspaper. That is until you realize that the people who are behind this movement are the same people behind the mainstream media, and you are not told what you're not supposed to know. The North American Union is the same concept as the European Union, the African Union, and the soon-to-be Asian Union, and the same people are behind all of them. And when the time is right, the North American Union, the European Union, the African Union, and the Asian Union will be merged together, forming the final stages of a plan these men have been working on for over 60 years. A one world government. I know NAFTA was a good idea, it's created millions of jobs and it has helped the economies of all three of these nations. All you have to do is go to Detroit and see the thousands of trucks lined up every day or go to our southern border. Uh, there have been winners and losers and that's the problem. But free trade is something I think that's vital to the future of America. As a free trader, I will open up every market in the world to Iowa agricultural products. Have people lost jobs? Yes, they have, and they're going to lose jobs, although the overall gain in jobs has been pretty impressive. Well, first of all, uh, I'm, I'm not... Uh, the, the Council on Foreign Relations uh, I don't know if I'm a official member. I have sp I've spoken there before. Uh, it basically is just a forum where a bunch of people talk about foreign policy. Uh, and so there's nothing, uh, there, there's no official membership. I don't have a card or, you know, a special handshake or anything like that. Um, the, 
in terms of this North America, uh, what, what do you, union, this has been uh, something I know Ron Paul's talked about and people have been talking about. I have to say, with all due respect, that I see no evidence of this actually taking place. I think this has been something that has been ginned up in certain blogs and the internet. It was based partly on the fact that there's this highway being built uh, in Texas that will facilitate more transportation and travel between Mexico uh, and the intercontinental United States on up through Canada. And so people have perceived that this potentially means that somehow there's going to be this uh, union like the European Union. There's no evidence that that's taking place. One bank, one army, one center of power. And if we have learned anything from history, it is that power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. This is Aaron Russo, a filmmaker and former politician. To his left is Nicholas Rockefeller of the infamous Rockefeller banking and business dynasty. After maintaining a close friendship with Nicholas Rockefeller, Aaron eventually ended the relationship appalled by what he had learned about the Rockefellers and their ambitions. Uh, I got a call one day from um, an attorney woman I knew, and she said, would you like to meet one of the Rockefellers? I said, sure, I'd love to. And uh, we became friends, and um, he began to divulge a lot of things to me. So he said to me one night, he said that uh, there's going to be an event there, and, and out of that event, you're going to see we're going to go into Afghanistan, so we run pipelines from the Caspian Sea. We're going to go into Iraq to take the oil and establish a base in the Middle East. And we're going to go into Venezuela and, and try and get, and get rid of Chavez. And uh, the first two they've accomplished, Chavez they didn't accomplish. And uh, they said, you're going to see guys going into caves looking for, <laughs> looking for people uh, that they're never going to find. You know, he was laughing about the fact that you have this war on terror. There's no real enemy. He's talking about how... By having this war on terror, you can never win it, because this is, so it's an eternal war. And so you can always keep taking people's liberties away. And I said, how are you going to convince people that this war is real? He said, but the media. The media can convince everybody it's real. I mean, you know, it's just that you keep talking about things. You keep saying it over and over and over again, and eventually people believe it. You know, you created the Federal Reserve in 1913 through lies. You create 9-11, which is another lie. Through 9-11, you, then you're fighting a war on terror, and now all of a sudden you go into Iraq, which was another lie, and now they're going to do Iran, you know? And it's all sort of one thing leading to another, leading to another, leading to another. Now, I would say, to them, why do you, what are you doing this for? What, what, what's the point of this thing? You have all the money in the world you ever want. You have all the power. I said, you know, you're hurting people. It's, it's not a good thing. And he would say, what do you care about the people for? Take care of yourself and you take care of your family. And then I said to him, what's the ultimate, what are the ultimate goals here? So the, the, goal, the ultimate goal is to get everybody in this world chipped with the, with the RFID chip and uh, have all money be on those chips and everything on those chips. And if anybody wants to protest what we do or violate what we want, we just turn off that chip. That's right, microchipped. In 2005, Congress, under the pretense of immigration control and the so-called war on terrorism, passed the Real ID Act, under which it is projected by May 2008 you will be required to carry around a federal identification card which includes on it a scannable barcode with your personal information. However, this barcode is only an intermediary step before the card is equipped with a Verichip RFID tracking module which will use radio frequencies to track your every move on the planet. If this sounds foreign to you, please note that the RFID tracking chip is already in all new American passports. And the final step is the implanted chip, which many people have already been manipulated into accepting under different pretenses. We have a Florida family who are really pioneers in a brave new world. 
They have volunteered to be the first ever to have microchip identification devices implanted into their bodies. After 9-11, I was really concerned um, with the security of my family. I wouldn't mind having something planted permanently in my arm that would identify me. In the end, everybody will be locked into a monitored control grid where every single action you perform is documented. And if you get out of line, they can just turn off your chip. For at that point in time, every single aspect of society will revolve around interactions with the chips. This is the picture that is painted for the future if you open your eyes to see it. A centralized one world economy where everyone's moves and everyone's transactions are tracked and monitored, all rights removed.